I love Gecko. Riot just showed off all of their newest agents' abilities in this VCT show match. Here, some of the biggest names in Valorant content creation had the chance to show the world what Gecko is all about. And I'm calling it now, he's going to be very strong. His abilities are just so cute. Even if they aren't strong, I don't see how people could resist picking him. But I really do believe Gecko is part of the upcoming meta. He's going to be the best defaulting agent in the game. You heard it here first. So what does he do? Well, kind of everything. Gecko is likely going to require lineups and good timings if you want to get the most bang for your buck. And that's our specialty at Skillcast. On our website, we have courses that go in depth on every agent in the game. And we're working on our Gecko course as you're watching this video. So instead of searching for all the best lineups and trying to compile them all for yourself, we'll have them all here for you. Or if we don't have what you're looking for, come ask us on our Ask a Pro Discord channel and we'll point you in the right direction. So let us help you and check us out at Skillcast. We'll be waiting. Let's start with Gecko's signature ability, and that's Dizzy. And yeah, all of his abilities are all as pets, which is so cool. It gives you like a personal attachment to these things. I love it. But what does Dizzy do? Well, by left clicking, you can send Dizzy forward into the air. Dizzy charges up and sends out beams at enemies in their line of sight. When enemies are hit, they are blinded. When Dizzy expires or gets shot, they turn into a glob, which can be picked up to be used again after a short cooldown. Oh, wait, wait a second. Hold on. Did, did I read that right? Can be used after a short cooldown. Oh God. This agent is nuts. Yeah, so all of his abilities can be picked up after being used. Then they cool down and you can use them again. Oh, and by the way, this cooldown is 10 seconds. That's not a long time, just ask my ex. If you manage to constantly pick up and cycle through your abilities, this guy is insane. But if you don't pick them up, they do expire and you won't be able to use the ability for the rest of the round. And once you throw his pets, a little cooldown bar appears above them, showing you how much time you have to pick them back up. So already with Gecko, you have a game plan being formed surrounding his utility and how you need to constantly recycle it. And plus, his pets are cute. You're just gonna let these little guys die? You monster. Next, let's talk about my favorite ability, Gecko's Wingman. Left click and you're gonna send Wingman forward looking for enemies. If an enemy is found, Wingman fires a concussive blast in a triangular shape, kind of like Yoru's decoy, to the first enemy scene. Right click when looking at a site or a spike that's already been planted, and this guy will plant the spike for you or defuse it. But keep in mind, Wingman can be destroyed by other players while planting or defusing the spike. When this ability expires, he turns into a glob, which can be picked up and be used again after a short cooldown. This ability is essentially raises Boombot, but it can literally plant the spike or defuse it. Say goodbye to those days of having one person on your team who just dies every time they go to plant. And no more fighting about who has to babysit the spike. Gecko comes with his very own spike sitter. He's cute, but we have to send him in. It's a sacrifice we're gonna have to make. But again, this is another part of your game plan if you plan to run Gecko in your team. Team comps. You're going to want to have agents that can help protect this little guy so you never have to be down a man when planting the spike. Harbor's Cove is the first idea that pops into my mind. He complements Gecko perfectly. So his buddies are pretty fragile, and I'm pretty sure his wingman only has 100 HP, so if you can protect them and play around them, it'll almost feel like you're playing a 6 versus 5. Now his last ability is his Mosh Pit. This works similarly to the way Breach's Aftershock used to work. Once you throw it, it spreads across a huge area, and after a short timer, it explodes. This is the one ability where I feel like it might get nerfed. I mean, the radius on this thing is huge. Also, if you manage to combo this with another agent like a Fade Seas, Astro Gravity Well, or a Sage Slow, this thing can do a ton of damage. Something else to keep in mind is that this is the only ability that can't be picked up, you know, because it explodes. But I do think that this is one of the better AoE effects in the game, and it can be great at clogging up important areas of each map, like a lobby on Haven, behind Rubble on Lotus, or even the plant spots on Icebox. His kit so far just seems really strong. Lastly, but certainly not least, let's talk about Thrash, his ultimate, and she hits like a truck. Press X and left click to control and link with Thrash to steer her. Left click while in the ultimate to lunge forward and explode, detaining any enemies within the radius like a Kildra ultimate. When Thrash expires, she turns into a glob, which can be picked up and be used again after a short cooldown. Thrash can only be reclaimed once. But like, dude, an ultimate that you can use more than once? Yeah, go ahead and tell me that this agent isn't going to be part of the meta. This shark buddy is only seven ultimate orbs as well, meaning that when you have this online, you could let this thing charge in and take the site. If Sky's Wolf and Kildra's Lockdown had a baby and that baby went to the gym and got super jacked thrash would fit the bill perfectly now his kit sounds awesome but what do these abilities look like in action well if you missed the show match i highly recommend you look back at it but i'll break down some of the best rounds that showcased gecko and his buddies in this round team frt are gearing up 
up for a CX cube. By first comboing Sopa's Recon and Gekko's Dizzy, it makes Mound almost impossible to hold for defenders, as there's just too much to shoot here. As they're getting ready to hit C, Sova drones in for his team, and Gekko uses this information perfectly. He pops his Thrash and steers her to exactly where Sova's drone last saw the enemies. They combo this with Harbor's Reckoning, which makes for a super strong execute. Go ahead, how are you supposed to hold sight against all of this going on? Now in this next round, Team Tarek decided to show early C pressure, farm an ult orb, then pivot back to B to go for a cheeky plant. But Jet went down over when they were defaulting C. Who's going to enter on the site? You guessed it, this little guy. Tarek sends in his wingman, but like I mentioned, you need something to protect him in order to get the spike down safely. Tarek follows it up with his thrash, plus a harbor ultimate, and the wingman gets the plant off. Now all the attackers have to do is play back in D main and spam the spike as the defenders try and go for the defuse. It's all just too much for Team FRT to handle, and the spike explodes. So while I was watching this match, my mind started racing. Where does he fit best in some of these maps? I jotted down some of these ideas, and they got some real legs beneath them. So if you're looking to pick up Gecko in the new act, here are a couple strats that I've been thinking of that would work really well. On Icebox, a big issue that a lot of teams struggle with is that it's hard to plant most of the time. Defenders constantly bombard these spots, trying to stall the plant and buy time for rotates. But now with Gecko, you're able to send your buddy in to plant the spike for you. This frees up one extra person to help fight back some of this incoming spam. Usually the person planting is saying something like, hold my rafters or hold my top sight, and then no one holds it for them, and then they die, and then they get tilted, and then you guys lose. And because one person is planting, you're essentially putting your team down a player when you go to plant. So before Gecko, you would have one less person holding for the planter, but now you can help and fight for this space while your wingman plants. And keep in mind, his utility is rechargeable. This means his team can default A main and B main pretty freely, potentially grab some orbs, pick up his pets, let them recharge, and get ready for another site hit pretty damn fast. Also, I haven't even talked about his mosh pit yet. This thing could deny plants so well on this map as the radius is just ginormous. With this in mind and being able to send your wingman whenever you want, we might start seeing some interesting post plant positions. Next, I think Pearl is another map where Gecko can shine. Again, defaulting is this new agent specialty. So if you want to default into mid or art and break some sentinel utility, you can do that. And same with the A main. But most importantly, Importantly, when you go for these plants, you can once again have your wingman do it for you. I've always preached how you should take dugout when executing A site, as if you don't, your team won't have enough room to play the post plant. I don't see it enough, but this is the new default plant spot. But when you execute on A, you usually have the Sentinel in A main holding flank and the other four people going in. One person needs to plant, meaning one person stays site to protect that person, and then the other two push into dugout. With Gecko, you can send his wingman into plant here and have an extra person holding smokes and help take this dugout control. And because this plant is pretty safe, it's going to be hard to punish. And the same thing goes for V-Site. As long as you have enough spam or a cove to block for the wingman, it should be hard for defenders to stop the plant. And as you know, once you get the spike planted on V-Site, it's a pretty smooth post plant. Now, lastly, I think that Gecko could work great on Haven. V-Site opens up and becomes a much more viable option as when your team gets in there, your goal becomes to protect the wingman. But once again, you have that extra body to spam back at anybody trying to stop the plant. And it's great on every other side as well, not just B. On A, for example, you can plant near ammo much more, and on C, you can plant back site up against double stack. Overall with Gecko, your plant spots, which are massively underrated, just become so much better. On Haven, you're also going to want to default, right? Default towards A, send your wingman down sewer like Raze's Boombot, dizzy towards long like Sky's Flash, and once the dust settles, you can pick them back up and have them up and ready in 10 seconds. Yeah, and in all of this theory crafting, I haven't even mentioned his ultimate, which I think is the best in the game. I mean, you get it twice around, it's crazy. Gecko is definitely for you greedy value players out there and he gets a ton of it. Now I don't know about you guys, but I think this new agent is going to hit the game hard. All of his abilities are so flexible and require both teams to play around them. Any agent with recharging abilities like this is going to find a ton of value. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel down below. It really does help us out. Like I mentioned, we already have a Gecko course in the works over on our website. Radiant coaches tackle the new agent, break them down, find lineups, and show you the ins and outs of how they should be played. And that's not all. With a subscription to our service, you also gain access to our exclusive Ask a Pro channel in our Discord where you can ask our staff anything Valorant related. No other service can offer you this much value, I promise. Now head on over to skillcap.com and get started in your way to that rank that you deserve. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for listening, guys. I'm Teets, and we here at Skillcap want to thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.